You're listening to the Tao of Indifference, sex, dating and relationship advice for an indifferent world. For more advice and tips, check out DaoofIndifference.com or follow us on Twitter at Indifferent underscore D. Hello listeners and welcome to episode 11. Today's topic is Your Guide to Casual Sex. Before we jump into the topic, I've got two questions that I wanted to answer. Uh, these are two questions that I saw on Reddit under the R Dating Advice uh, subject title. I don't know. I'm new to Reddit. Um, so I just wanted to read my answers to these questions because I thought they were pretty good questions. First is need advice about dates. And I'm going to quote. I'm going to read it verbatim. So firstly, I would like to apologize for using a throwaway, but since everyone knows my account name, I want to be on the safe side. I recently dated this girl, and I would like to ask her out again. The first time, we just took a walk and chatted for a couple of hours, and it went well. Now I'm wondering, what is the next step? Activity, dinner, both? I'm also wondering how many dates I have to take initiative to before it's her turn, if you get my point. I don't want to be the one asking all the time. I would if she asked me out. Feel free to ask questions if you don't understand what I mean. Thanks in advance for your help. So this is the advice that I provided to this man who created a throwaway account to have his questions asked. All right. So since your first date was very informal, you might want to go with something a little more planned for date two. Dinner's fine, but you want to save that for a third date. You already did an activity date, the walking around for hours. So why not take her out for drinks? Pick somewhere on the nicer side, i.e. not a dive bar. I'd say if date two goes well, and date three, at that point a nice dinner, also goes well, you can always say, hey, I'd love for you to plan the next date, seeing as how it's the fourth date. Um, And now the gentleman asked me um, if asking her to plan the next date would be pushy, to which I say it's not pushy. If you're, if you're on the fourth date with someone and you've already planned three dates, um, if you've made it to date number four, this is somebody who's more than likely interested in you. So at that point, if you just say, hey, um, I'd love for you to plan the next date, you keep it very informal. It doesn't have to be. You can tell her or him that it doesn't have to be a huge extravaganza, but you know, I'd like to see what kind of cool date you'll come up with. Not a problem, not pushy. And that was the advice I gave the gentleman. So, my next question was from a 25-year-old man. He says, okay, I've had relationships. They usually don't last at all, long at all. My problem is that I'm not a talker. I prefer to listen on dates. I actually don't know what to bring up to even trigger a question about myself. Like, what should I say? I just prefer listening to other people. I like to learn about purple. It's difficult to explain, really. No clue what purple means. (laughs) Uh, so I will get to my advice for the guy. It's a little long, so bear with me. So, I've always found that when you're on a date, you want to ask questions that are either situational, personal, or external. You guys will remember this about the flirting. Here are some examples. Situational. This is a great restaurant, slash bar, slash whatever venue you're in on said date. Have you ever been? Personal. I've heard you really love... Her major interests, hobby, passion. I've always been really interested in said interests. What do I need to know about this interest to get into it? External. Your hair, nails, jewelry, outfit, makeup looks amazing. Did you just get it done, slash buy it, slash etc. From here, you start asking open-ended questions. Now, I then provided a link, which I will link in my show notes, and I'll write that down, of 40 conversation starters which are open-ended, and I'll provide it to you guys. Okay. So that is it for the questions section. I hope those were helpful. If you are thinking of those questions and you're having those same issues, uh, let's move on to the guide to casual sex. Now, I wanted to go over it because I noticed that one of my early blog posts, um, How to Maintain a Friends with Benefits Relationship, uh, received a lot of views. A lot of people are interested in friends with benefits and casual hookups. And I realized when I was rereading it, as I often do, that my advice was very general, but it also related to experiences I had and essentially sort of conveyed 
the fact that you really just need to um, communicate, and if you're not into it, move on, which is good. But I want to give you guys a working, uh, a set of working advice to get you into and maintain a um, casual relationship. So, your guide to casual sex: one, be honest. Now, at the very outset of a casual relationship, you're probably going to be uh, showing your interest, and at some point, you have sex. Now, at that point, you need to be honest about what even actually no. Before you even have sex, you want to be honest about what you're looking for. If you're someone who just wants to have sex, nothing else, not even a friendship, just a booty call every now and then, you need to say that. If you're someone who's looking for a not serious relationship where you hang out, you maybe go on dates, you have sex, but you're not in a titled, committed relationship, that's fine. And any other variation of this is what I want, just say that. Um, you want to say that before before you have sex, really, because some people, a lot of people view sex as a gateway into a potential relationship. A lot of people don't see that see sex that way. But what you want to do is not give someone a reason to doubt your intentions. You need to lay out your intentions really early on and see if they match up with the person. Now, if a person is being dishonest about their intentions, they say they're okay with a casual relationship and then suddenly decide that they are no longer okay with it. At that point, you're sort of free of any responsibility. Everyone is responsible for their own act actions. And if you tell someone point blank, listen, I only want sex. Um, you're nice. I'm not interested in a relationship. I don't like titles. Whatever you say, if they go along with it and then say, you know what, this bothers me, I'm out, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with changing your mind. But you want to give them the opportunity to do that really early on. You don't want them tied to you in any way if it's going to hurt their morale or their self-esteem or whatever. It's really you want to avoid being the person who says, yeah, I really see a future with you when all you want is sex. There's nothing wrong with just wanting sex. In fact, people do it all the time. There's plenty of ways to get sex. Tinder is a great example. If you are looking for hookups and you're not using Tinder, maybe you should use Tinder or any other dating site. You can say pretty much that you only want to hook up with people and people will have sex with you. It's not like... You're the 1% of daters if you do that. It's more common than you think. I'd say about 50% of daters are looking for casual sex. Now, whether they're satisfied with it or not is a completely different story. Now, once you're honest, you want to communicate. And when I say communicate, and again, I stress this, and I cannot stress this enough. When I say communicate, I mean that you need to communicate about what you like, what you don't like, um, where you see things going, where you don't see things going, if someone new comes into the picture, anything that comes up once you're in this open, casual, hookup, booty call relationship, whatever you want to call it, once you're in it, you need to continuously communicate if things change. If you suddenly find someone you want to be in a relationship with, you need to tell your casual partner, hey, listen, I met someone I want to be in a relationship with this other person. You need to let them know. And by the same token, they should be able to tell you, hey, listen, my feelings have changed. If you are in agreement or you disagree with how I want things to proceed, let me know. Communication goes both ways. You, If you are the person driving the casual relationship, you should not be the only one talking about how you feel or how, what you want. They should also talk about it. And you, you need to be afraid. You need to not be afraid of the risk of the casual relationship ending. Um, more often than not, casual relationships end because either someone wants something more or they just don't want to do it anymore. It just happens. And you can't be afraid of saying, well, I want this, and then expecting them to stick around. Just be open and communicate. The next thing, and this is really important, um, and this is really for the folks who get emotionally attached and attach a lot of emotions with sex. Don't try to make it into something it isn't. Don't make it into something else. And what I mean is this, um, and I don't want to be gender specific, uh, but more often than not, in my experience anyway, when being in a casual relationship, it is more often than not women who 
have a certain emotional attachment to sex. And this, again, is just my experience as a straight man. But it also happens to men as well. I've heard it, heard about it happening to men. But people can often attach sort of emotional meaning and connection to the act of sex where so a lot of people and a lot of single men don't. A lot of single men are in it to have sex just to have sex. And a lot of women and a lot of single straight women often attach sort of a relationship and a connection to sex. So what you want to do is if you are a person who is in a casual relationship, you need to having been told what your relationship is and having been communicated with and communicating back and forth, you need to understand that you can't make it into something else just by having sex with them or making them go to public events with you. You can't make it into something that it is not. It's sort of the flip side of the communication where if you think that this, re this casual relationship is going somewhere or going in a direction that you want it to go, you should address it. Um, you can't make it go in a different direction just by willing it through just thinking that it'll work or having all the sex and doing all the things that he or she really, really wants to do. That doesn't make a casual relationship into a relationship. Um, now, between all of these three, the fourth thing I would say is set your guidelines and agree upon them. And now I, I know I'm approaching things very clinically sort of very uh, litigiously, <laughs> but you really want to say, listen, and I'm just going to go through and just, I, I like to talk things out. If I, Demetrius, were interested in a casual relationship with you, imaginary person, um, this is what I would want out of it. I would want X, Y, Z. And now imaginary person would say, well, I like X and Y, but I don't like Z. Can we not do Z? I prefer to do A. And now maybe your ex is, I don't want to hang out during the day. Or maybe your ex is, I do want to hang out during the day and I'm going to treat you as a friend. And maybe Z is, I want to hang out with you. I want to do, I want to hang out with you, go on dates, um, but I refuse to meet any of your friends or whatever the criteria are. You should agree to those guidelines, which goes back to your communication, which goes back to not trying to turn something into something else through sex. Um, and about being honest. Now, I know I'm like a squeaky wheel with this, but please use protection. If you're in a casual relationship, it is the exact opposite of being in a committed relationship. As such, you probably should be using protection. And by probably, I mean 100% should be using protection. Please protect yourself. Um, I can't go over the rates of STD trans transmission for whatever age group you're in, the rate's high. So use protection. Um, and finally, just have fun. Uh, the reason that you're getting into it is should not be because you're depressed and you want someone to sleep with. You sh if you're choosing to have a very non-traditional relationship, a casual relationship, um, it should be about enjoying it. I mean, there's very few species on earth who have sex for fun and humans are one of them and you if you're going to be having casual sex you might as well be having fun of course again going back to my five previously stated ways to have a great casual sex relationship um always use protection um pick your guidelines and stick with them don't try to make it into something else in fact if you do that it will probably take away from the enjoyment the having fun Communicate and be honest. You can always leave a casual relationship as soon as you get in a year down the line, two years down the line, two days down the line. So don't be held into it. Now, of course, um, how do you maintain a casual relationship really is the same as how you get into it. Just keep communicating and just be honest and just state what your intentions are. Um, and that's pretty much it. Now, again, of course, can't stress it enough, use protection, have fun. Um, and if you decide that casual relationships aren't for you, that's fine. Tell your partner, end it. There's nothing wrong with having had a casual relationship. And there's nothing wrong with going from being the person who has casual relationships 
and now wants to have real relationships. Um, I wish you the best of luck. And as always, good luck out there. Bye.